Hey guys, lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room in Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Thursday, February the 4th, 2021, and this is video number 94. It's been a whole week since I last uploaded my last podcast, so I want to catch you up on what's been going on. Uh, let's kick it off with the new hairdo. I got a cut, haircut about five days ago. Out of curiosity, I said to my stylist, can you just pull up the last time I got a haircut on your system? And he uh, checked it for me and said, August of 2020. We are sitting in February, 2021. So I, I don't know, maybe that's six months. It uh, felt like a lifetime since I saw him last. So um, yeah, very, very much needed haircut had happened, had to happen. So I feel a lot lighter. But this is not a podcast about hairstyles. It's about my life journey in yarn. So that's knitting, crocheting, a little dabbling in uh, hand dyeing, as well as acquisitions where I buy my yarn from. If there's any sales along the way, I like to share them with, with you guys. So uh, if it's the first time here on the channel and you're thinking, what is this all about? It's me just talking about all of my Yanni adventures. And if you like the content and you're interested in uh, sticking around, please think about giving me a thumbs up and joining us here amongst our Fibre friends by hitting the subscribe button down below and to the Fibre friends who are returning, welcome back. I have been loving reading all of your comments, all of your support for hubby who showed showed up in one of our unboxing and uh, price point comparison videos from a couple videos back. So uh, he has said that he may return. He really had a, a fun time with the videoing, uh, but as a full-time worker himself, he's committed elsewhere. So occasionally we might bump into each other here uh, with him being on a video as well. So let's talk about the finished object. I only have one this week and it's what I'm wearing. So it's another cow. Ooh, it's blowing out there. It fits very, very nice. It's sort of midway between a snug fit and one that's a little more uh, loopy, I guess. Not, not loopy, but uh, relaxed. I really like the color play of the stitch work that I use. It's knitted. I'm a, generally a right-handed knitter, but uh, with the Continental, uh, I introduce the second color uh, in the rhythm as well with my left hand. So that I like to practice every once in a while. Uh, and I got an inspiration from watching a YouTuber out there. She's, uh, I believe her name is, I'm just gonna look because I don't wanna get it wrong. It's called, her name is Tyler Earl, and she is Fiber for the People. Uh, I saw a blend style cowl that she had done with all of her hand dyed yarn that she has uh, and it was sort of in a in a similar way to this and I loved the inspiration point so I jumped in and I did one myself with a couple of yarn that I have uh, in my stash to, to try it out to to bust through the stash as well as uh, check out the different color variation and uses with uh, with the with the style of pattern that you see here. Yeah, so thank you for the fiber friend who mentioned for me to take a look at the channel called Fi uh, Fiber for the People, and I believe it was Judy Little who. Uh, kind of nudged me that way. So thank you, Judy, for uh, giving me the suggestion to check it out. So I'll just take it off so you can see what it looks like in its entirety. And we can talk about the, uh, ooh, got to fix up the new hairdo. Uh, we can talk about the construct of it and what I use. So I used a uh, 3.75 set of nil, 3.75 millimeter set of uh, circular knitting needles. God, that's a mouthful, isn't what it? What I used, as I mentioned, was the 3.75 millimeter set of circular needles and the length was 24 inches in length. And I used two yarns. The color of the yellowy gold one was from Cascade 220 superwash effects 
and the number of the color because they don't label cascade doesn't label then their names of their color uh, on their ball bands it is color number doo, doo, doo. Uh, where is it color zero nine and it is a superwash 100% superwash uh, wool so easy care instructions you can throw it in the wash and it says here tumble dry as well which is great uh, it's a it's a lighter weight it's a lighter weight four I would say it's almost it's more of a three weight but it sits in between a three and a four uh, and I mixed it with Lion Brands Mandala in the colorway what is this colorway it is cool I think it's just called cool and um, it is grays and off-white so the way I handled the color for color controlling was I dismantled the the cake and cut out the sequences of four different tones that it goes through and this is all that I had left so the cake itself is a four weight yarn and there are 3.5 ounces or 150 grams in each cake and it's uh, doo -doo -doo, 315 meters 100% acrylic so I am blending uh, yarn types as well acrylic with the 100% superwash merino but I really love the play of the neutrals and the yellow I hear that Pantone has selected their uh, I guess colors for 2021 and it's gray and yellow so it's kind of on point with uh, the trend going out right now with Pantone colors I don't really kind of follow the color trends that that well but I guess this time I did uh, so yeah I really like those together super nice and I uh, have enough scraps there to make something else which is great so the Lion Brand Mandala Ombre that was used in that uh, in that color experiment Cal was in a yarn box that Crystal from Bag A Day sent me so thank you Crystal I absolutely love the Mandala Ombre it's one of my top 10 <clears throat> excuse me top 10 likes of uh, of what I really enjoyed last year as well as this year uh, so awesome awesome so that's the only thing that I've made for the week but I have been working on my blanket I won't show you the progress on that because I did probably about six inches uh, more of the of the blanket and that's taken me yeah several hours over the week that I've worked on and I started a new uh, cast on as well I will uh, showcase that because it's going to be talking a little bit about my next segment which is the tools of uh, both knitting and crocheting uh, okay I'll start you off on the journey when I began I started on straight needles for knitting and I started with uh, Susan Bates uh, crochet hooks so this is uh, the two style of tools that I used so oh, Susan Bates uh, crochet hooks I'm using the five at the moment uh, so that's out of the package that's what I'm uh, using for my blanket and it's all metal so there's no ergonomic handle uh, I really like these ones because they're just pointy enough to uh, to loop or find the stitch and stick it through without uh, shredding the the yarn as well as not having to finagle too much of a wriggle to get the stitch so I really like the Susan Bates and they're very very economic in price uh, so yeah that this was the very first set that I bought and I still use them to today and these were the first knitting needles that I purchased from Michaels the Susan Bates I also got from Michaels and I chose to buy the bamboo ones because uh, they felt nice to touch uh, generally when I first started uh, knitting I 
felt the metal needles really cold against my hands. So I like the warmer feel of the bamboo when I first got going on knitting. And these were clovers, I believe. Yeah, they were clovers. And I really like the shorties. Like to me, they're, they're short. They're kind of uh, eight to nine inches in length. And I liked that when I was practicing my stitches and I started off with swatches that I cho chose the shorter length needles uh, because I didn't need much room to maneuver the needle around uh, when I was using them. So I normally sit uh, down when I'm knitting and I have the needles resting in my hands towards the my lap. And if I'm kneading with longer needles, I need clearance of however long the needle is. So if I'm going to be practicing or whatever, I don't want to obscure my practice session with the needles by needing to have lots of clearance around. So I was finding that longer needles uh, didn't work for me because I kept on hitting the arm of the armchair that I sit in or I had to raise my uh, my hands up above to get the clearance that I needed for the longer needles. So if you're starting out, I would say try getting smaller needle lengths. And uh, yeah, so that's what I went with. And they were from Michaels, as I mentioned, I always uh, utilize the coupon. Every visit that I went there, I would choose to get the needles uh, and use what like purchase one needle at the time so I could get 30% discount because they are a little pricey at Michaels. They're probably around, I'm going to say anywhere from uh, $8 to 12 Canadian per set. And uh, with the 30% off that generally happens with Michael's discount coupons uh, that drops down to a little bit more affordable. So around uh, $6 to $7 per set. Yeah, then I ventured into the world of circular set of knitting needles. So here's another brand as well with the bamboo. And they these are the clovers as well. So they are various uh, thicknesses and lengths. So I found that these wires were a little bit of a memory retainer. Uh, so if you were to have them packed, you know, packed in the cases like this, it would retain some of the memory and flick around on you as you were uh, knitting. But I found after a time that memory kind of was lost. It was uh, relaxed after a certain amount of use. So that was really good as well. They're probably around the same price point as the flat needles. So really great for if you're wanting to do a lot of beanie work or hat work works in the round, you can actually use circular set of knitting needles to knit up flat panels as well. So if you want to do a scarf, uh, that's possible as well with going back and forth on the circulars. Uh, just a, a little bit of a tip as well. If you are doing a set, buying a set of circulars to do a lot of cylinder work and you want to do hats where it closes up at the, at the end, uh, a good measure of, I guess what I would, would have done had I've known would be to buy the double pointed needles for the same size of knitting needle that you purchased just to close it up and finish the the item that you're building. So the double pointed needles are, they look like this. They're just, uh, they come in groups of five generally and they're just, let me just take this out. Groups of five needles and they sort of have points on either end, hence the name, the double pointed needle. And they are used to close up the holes to any uh, circumference or any opening. Uh, with hats, the, the hole close is completed and these are what you need to complement your, your needle size for the hat that you buy circular, circulars for. So, that's uh, my little sash there of uh, my double pointed needles in a little crochet pouch that I did 
It was a tutorial from, oh, I can't remember what the name was of this tutorial, but it was for a phone case. Uh, I don't really use phone cases. Like, I don't know why a phone needs to be uh, nice and warm, but I use them for pouches for my double pointed needles and I can close them up. They're kind of, right now they're kind of stuck and I can't close it up, but it does have a close. With crochet as well, I tried the bamboo. I believe this might be panda or clover. And it's just a very lightweight crochet hook. There's the end point there. And I like this too because it is warmer to touch on the hand and it's super, super light. So I think those aspects of what, uh, what you're looking for, if you're looking for something light, uh, bamboo is really good. Now, there is a little bit of resist because it's wood on the yarn. It doesn't glide as much as a metal wood, but sometimes I like the, the feel of the extra tension so that I know exactly what is going on with my fabric that I'm building up. So I put a little bit of more energy into uh, focusing on the the tension with a bamboo as opposed to a uh, a full metal a full metal uh, crochet hook so the first time I purchased uh, ergonomic crochet hook was this one here and I didn't like it I know some of you out there love these ergonomic handles because they got a great grip here I know when I was first starting off, I liked it because I felt more secure that I was not going to uh, drop my uh, implement, my crochet hook as I was working. And I found that the only thing that I didn't like about the the stretch here on the uh, before you get to the ergonomic handle was that you could only utilize a certain set of stitches on your crochet hook at a time before they started to like hit and butt up against this plastic handle. So I did like it when I first started because I felt that I was comfortable in holding it. I wouldn't drop my implement, but then it got to the point where I wanted to um, have that ex extra excess area at the top before, uh, you know, considering that only maybe you know, four stitches would go on there, pack on nicely, and anything more would be a little bit more of a challenge to fit on there. Uh, also got this from Michaels. It's the Loops and Threads uh, larger set, and they their heads are a little different on their hook. So I find this one's a little harder to use as well because you have to... Uh, wriggle a little bit into the stitch uh, only because the head is a little uh, slightly rounded and the Susan Bates so far are my favorite so the very first purchase that I made was like a great introduction to uh, crochet the other ones that I tried was Michael's loops and thread have their own brand as well and I have all of this here because it's like easy access for me, it's available for me to purchase. So I bought some more circular knitting needles uh, in the loops and threads variety purchased at Michaels. So a little bit of sad news about my Michaels is that it went out of business and it closed down. Uh, it uh, was, uh, I remember it happened uh, just after Christmas sometime, I went in to visit the store and all the shelves were uh, being packed away by workers. Uh, I saw a couple of familiar faces that I love uh, chatting to when I go into the Michael store and found out that they were told two days after Christmas uh, that January the 20th of 2021 was going to be their last day and they were uh, asked to come in and help pack up the store and they weren't being placed in another location they were let go so I felt terrible uh, about all of those workers that I'd become kind of familiar with and yeah uh, that they're kind of lo lost a job and they're kind of now 
you know, they're not part of the Michaels family. And uh, that's kind of a, a little disappointing. So my heart goes out to all of the friends that I had made at that store. I hope that you, they are doing well and finding uh, finding their next job in the crafts, crafty world somewhere else. There is another store that uh, I can go to to get my supplies for knitting and crocheting and it is called Dress Sew. So it's more of a fabric place. They do have a large basement area where it's devoted to a small part of it's devoted to knitting and crocheting. So I go into my dress. So, uh, this is <clears throat> what I had purchased from dress. So super ergonomic and it gets the job done. It's, it's a brand called prism. And most of these that I have in my hand right now are 99 cents. So again, circular knitting needles, and they have a strong memory in their cord but for 99 cents if you are looking to complete a job or just get through something uh, that you need a knit, knitting needle size uh, quite cheap then this is a good brand to get uh, and the one thing that I do like about this brand as well it comes in a very durable plastic seal and I can pull them uh, you know put them back in without ripping the uh, cheaper plastic, which is like what I'm getting with the uh, loops and threads, the plastic tears, and also these clovers. The plastic is also quite cheap, like the container. But these ones are, are really good because they always go in and they don't rip the casing. Another one from Dress Sew that I use, uh, that I found, is a little bit more expensive and it's this brand here called Unique. Again, the uh, cord has memory as well, but just to get through a project, uh, this brand would be good and it's also in a very good durable case as well. We do have different levels of affordability for our tools of our crafts and price point expectations on what we get for what we pay for. I would say everything that I've shown from the beginning of my crafting are great tools and I still use them to get the job done today. Uh, but I am branching out. I am going to be uh, showcasing a, a slightly more expensive range right now that have different materials that they have used and also they are, uh, I guess, a different quality. And so I'm branching out to see a little bit of a test point on what I want to uh, buy. I want to buy one of those interchangeable sets for knitting. And I also want to buy a really good crochet wooden tool kit as well for crochet uh, hooks. So right now I am trying out Knitter's Pride, which is these little little uh, needles, they're shorty needles to uh, for me to knit either socks and I've done a couple of mittens with them already and they work up great. The uh, cords are good, the join is awesome, there's no kind of catching on uh, of, the, of the yarn when I'm using the Knitter's Pride. And these are the variety called Dreams. So I don't know how many sets they have, in Knitter's Pride, but these ones are a wooden, a wooden tip with a metal, I guess, join between the cord and the, the, the wooden tips. I like them, they worked up great. My favorite so far that I, I've found are the higher hires and they are stainless steel and they have a really good cord as well that doesn't have any memory, so quite a flexible one there. And again, I purchased a shorty set. I believe it's a nine inch, yeah, it's a nine inch. And these are also good for the socks as well as the um, uh, mittens. And I've done mittens with these as well as the other ones as well. And I have also 
cheated in my way a little bit at closing up hats using the shorties, the nine inches, and saved myself a little bit of time for, for uh, from, I guess, fin finagling with my double pointed needles as, uh, <laughs> as little as possible. So I would actually use the nine inches to get uh, closer to the close of the hole and then I'd jump into these. So I kind of, uh, make my life a little easier by sticking with the circular set of needles as long as I can when I'm closing up the hats. Um, so those are the, the, the ones that I'm branching out on because I want to get myself a set of interchangeable needles and a set of beautiful wooden handcrafted uh, crochet hooks as well. So I do have one other thing to show you. I just got to reach across here. I met one of my first fiber friends. Well, actually my first fiber friend that, um, that I made here on YouTube and she lives in the area as well, like the Vancouver uh, lower mainland area. And I was talking to her about some, some things and she was like, I have, Addy knitting needles. Would you like to change, uh, sorry, try them out? Uh, they are the interchangeable click and twist varieties that click and lock. And so I'm trying the uh, her Addy needles. Thank you so much for loaning me these needles. So I'm in working on a sock yarn held double on a three millimeter, I believe it's a three millimeter set of circulars. And at this point, the little click in area has a, a raised, I'm gonna say it's a little lip that raises where the join is. And I'm finding that my stitches aren't gliding across. They're kind of, I don't know, like a train track almost like they're going over that uh, little raised lip. And I don't know, I'm gonna work through them to see if I like them. Uh, the points are lovely. I really do like the points and uh, the the lightness of it and the cord is really great. It doesn't have memory, which is awesome. But that little join there, I'm not too sure about that. I will continue on practicing, but you know who you are. Thank you so much for the loan of your Addy. Uh, yeah. So, dress so. Since the Michaels has closed down for me, I am visiting my dress so a lot more frequently uh, and I've gotten in on a new obsession. <laughs> yes, how much more can I bear to like take on here? But I have started liking buttons. Oh my goodness. Dress so is the button capital of Vancouver. So I go into Dresso and they have four or five aisles from uh, floor to, I'm gonna say head height, maybe six feet of racks of buttons. They have uh, probably around, I'm gonna take a guess, a hundred buttons in each color of the rainbow that you can think of, then more. There's the earthy tones, there's the neutrals, there's the black, there's the chrome. So I went in and I bought myself some buttons. Now I'm not gonna to spend too much time going through them, but I'll quickly just show you what I've got. I got some snap-on buttons for projects that might be, uh, if I'm making some cases or some uh, bags or pouches, these snap-on buttons might work really well. I have also got denim buttons that you see generally uh, from jean jackets or uh, I'm going to say jeans themselves, like uh, pant jeans. And those come with a, it's kind of like a, a stamping kit. So you can sort of um, join them together. I got some wooden style buttons with little little kind of notches in them like a pattern and a lot of the buttons that they the walls that I just described to you about come in little tubes and they have uh, 
them. I don't know, maybe they hold around 50 of the button types inside the tube. And you just take them up to the counter and you say how many you like. So I am making a lot of noise here with this plastic bag that I can't open, but I will rip it open. Got a whole baggie here of a variety of buttons. So I'll just show you a few of them. These kind of brownish buttons. <laughs> buttons for eyes. Really cool. So I was thinking of doing some amigurumi as well. Oh, I'm just all over the place, aren't I? And I like the idea of putting on buttons for eyes. I know that you can buy those safety eyes that you stamp together and you, uh, you get them all different colors and some that look like pupils, some that look like animal eyes. But I like the idea of just going back to a basic button for an eye. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've uh, bought myself <laughs> buttons. Uh, I think that's about it. I do want to catch you up on a few things that I've been doing over the week as I no normally do uh, a segment part of my videos where I talk about what I've been watching on TV and maybe listening on the radio, uh, some points of inspiration. So let's start with one point of inspiration which is a knitting a uh, little segment, five minute documentary or five minute talk or chat with uh, a knitter. And it is called uh, The Man Who Knit, or The Man Who Knits, I should say. It's on YouTube. Uh, I don't know who did the original publication, but there is the five minute movie available on YouTube. And it is about E.J. Jones, a uh, gentleman who makes a lot of hats. And this particular video that I'm gonna link down below for you to watch, if you're so inclined, uh, talks about him going into thrift stores, being very frugal, and buying garments that he unravels. Wool garments, is it alpaca, and uh, mohair, so different types of garments, and he'll unravel them and make his hats out of them. So uh, really, really interesting uh, little five minute vignette on him. And it was also a, uh, a documentary that was tagged at, from one of my fiber friends for me to watch, and it was from Lemon Cakes. So thank you, Lemon Cakes, on that one. It was an interesting watch, and I, he's just an adorable character. So uh, I think that anyone who watches it will also be inspired, even by his makes, but his character is just amazing. Um, the next thing that I wanna share with you was an apology because I told you guys that my last documentary uh, to watch was called Becoming You, it was on Netflix. It was not on Netflix. It was actually a documentary that is available on um, Apple TV. So we are subscribers to iTunes and part of that subscription is we get Apple TV. So uh, unfortunately, if you don't have Apple TV, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how you would watch that documentary Becoming You, but um, it is out there and it's available on Apple TV. Uh, the music that uh, I'm gonna add down below is also an in inspiration point for me. Uh, it is two singers like two musicians two singers that i've been following for a long time since they were uh young i'm gonna say young students who were promoting their music through youtube and that's where i was following them they're called us the duo and uh they've since over the years of watching what they've been doing with their with their music they've gotten married to each other uh and they have had a little baby so I really, really love us the duo. Uh, I will link uh, a couple of my favorite uh, videos that they have made with uh, their music. If you are so inclined to uh, jump on board as well and get to know them, they're a, a great bunch of people, and the baby's so cute. So yeah, I'll leave you with those things. I don't think I have anything else to add. Today was a little bit more about tools. I know not much uh, crafts to reveal, but 
Uh, a much needed thing to talk about, I guess, part of us uh, being in the Yarni community, we need to sometime address uh, what tools are being used and where to get them. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, and you're having a great week. I will see you next week. Bye for now.